Okay now, here is the Butler branch. Now we're going from right where the from where the South Bend branch cut off right here and we're going to go straight across there. As you can see this goes now this goes on the other this goes on the other side of this okay now all right now it goes on the other side of this on the other side of this big building here the LMU has these tracks go on the other side come right up through here now I don't know if you could see it or not, but when I was doing the one E shot, we could kind of see the, you might have been able to see it, you might not have. This is a coal conveyor. Goes clear across the Eel River. And this, this coal conveyor, you see the line? This is the Butler branch. It goes right underneath that coal conveyor. It keeps on going on. But this coal conveyor goes across the Eel River. And it feeds the Logan Sport power plant right here. Um, and I can probably, I'm going to be checking into it and see about getting some other shots of this coal conveyor because it's not used anymore. And I think one of these days they're going to get rid of it. I think they haven't because it's going to be a dramatic undertaking. But if we go on. Okay, now. You see this line right here. This is where the Butler branch was made a trail. It's called the River Bluff Trail. This point right here. This point about right here is where the track came in. And, and this path follows the track. There's a bridge right here. If we go on, here's one of the bridges that they built for the trail. And, and the, the track basically follows this line. Well, it followed past tense. It's not there anymore. But it went, it basically followed the Eel River. We can follow it for so long. We can also see some of the, the path of where it is. Okay, now, right here's Logan Sport. Right up here is Butler. And Butler Branch followed the Eel River for so far, and then it kind of broke away, and it goes to Butler. The Butler Branch had several small uh, railroads running it. They were subsidiaries of the Pennsylvania. 
They were the Terre Haute and Indianapolis Railroad from 1901 to 1904. And I'm just going to throw this in. In 1901, 216 trains were registered coming through Logansport daily. That's quite a few trains for a small town. Okay. 19, from 1905 to 1916, it was operated by the Vandalia Railroad. And the Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Chicago, and St. Louis Railroad began in 1917 operating it. <clears throat> and it was during this era, 1917, that the line obtained the Butler Branch designation. And this is because trackage rights allowed Pennsylvania trains to travel to Butler, Indiana. Then they continued over the Wabash Railroad to Toledo, Ohio, which there were a lot of factories um, in the auto business and I believe appliances also. A lot of business. So, and, okay, trackage rights, okay. And... Yes, and remember when I was talking about remember when I was talking about that this track that was to the south was a bypass that's what those Pennsylvania trains used so they could go right around this they could go past this yard fairly quickly and onto Butler and jump on the Wabash and go to Toledo now the Pennsylvania Railroad obtained full jurisdiction of the Butler branch in 1921 and Sadly, declining business and poor track conditions led to embargo being placed on the line between Auburn and Butler. And abandonment of this, abandonment of this line began in 1954 with complete ab abandonment by 1977. Okay. Now, okay, that's it for this. And then we're going to I've got one other thing left here to show you. Okay. Now, we talked about the bypass. Now, now we're heading west here. When I looked when I was looking at Garden Street and you saw how it curved. Okay. This is still the Butler branch right here. This curves around. This track is out of service to right here. Trains no longer go up this way. But down here, they do. The Winnemac and Southern Rail Railroad operates this track. They operate on this track. I'll show you more of that. Okay. Now, Winnemac and Southern, they operate on here. You come down here, there's this junction. Now, if you go up this way, this is the Pennsylvania Richmond branch to Anderson and Richmond. Trains could come up this way. They would go through there and they would go up and be on the Butler branch. Now, And this, and this is also, I talk about the Columbus Chicago Main Line. Those trains would also come through here also. On their way to Chicago, they would come up through here 
but they wouldn't go on the Butler branch. They would keep on going out. And this would this is the Pennsylvania Road Efner branch to Efner and uh, Toledo, Peoria, and Western. And they would come out to a point. I'm come up. I know I'm coming up on it here. Okay. Okay, right here. This is. They would get on this line right here. This is now a trail. This is the Panhandle Trail. But this rail that was right here. This right here. That would go on to Chicago. That would that's part of the Chicago Columbus Main Line. It's not what I'm modeling, but this is the way the trains went. Okay, now let me get back here. Okay. After a branch, going that way. Now I'm pretty sure that there was a line coming through here. And this would be going north and south. Pennsylvania Railroad INF branch to Indianapolis. The INF branch trains would come in this way. And I don't know if they'd be on this track. I think there was a cutoff here. And they would go through and go right up onto the Butler branch. And they would go to Toledo. But this goes to Indianapolis and Frankfurt. This, this line right here. This area right here. It's referred to as VAN, capital V-A-N. And there was a tower in this area. I don't know exactly where it was. I don't know. There's something here, but I'm not sure if that's what it is. But, yeah, Richmond Branch, INF Branch, and Efner Branch all came together right here. The Winnemac and Southern, they operate, they operate down through here, and on down the track here, there is a cement plant and some other businesses. This right here, this is a big hardwood facility. I'm pretty sure that they deal with that. And at one time there was a there was a yard in here also. It was I believe it was called Yard C. It was all in here. Ran out, you could see where some of it was. You see your now. I'll tell you more about the Chicago and Columbus, when we're right here, the trains, they came across here. If they were going to Columbus, they'd be going the other way, all the way around through here. And this yard right here, this is yard B. This was a, a formerly a repair, a big repair facility. It's now owned by a company called Transco, I believe. They repair railroad cars. You go along the track here. You come down. This is 18th Street Yard. It starts here. Okay. It starts right here. And it ends about right in here. It's over a mile long. 
but your trains will come out this way on their way to Columbus. And they keep going. And they come around this curve. And you can see where the line used to be. This jumped off of here and you're on to Chicago. You're on the way to Columbus. You're going to go through Onward, Bunker Hill, Marion, several other towns. Just thought I'd throw that in there. So, okay. So this concludes my flyover. And this episode of Tracks 101 and I hope you enjoyed it. I spent a little bit of a time doing this. And if you like this content, would like to see more of it, leave me a comment, like or subscribe. So hey, this is Ralph Greenwood saying hey, have a good day.